Hey fans, followers. Today I have a gem of a video for you today. I've managed to actually pull up a webinar that I recorded in 2017 regarding crypto Bitcoin investing. So this webinar was given in 2017 by myself to a few friends who decided to join the webinar. I did actually advertise this webinar on Facebook so those who did get the message and took action and joined as have actually made quite a lot of money from the investments and from the knowledge gained from the webinar and thereafter investing. So at the time of this recording, I should say the webinar, let's imagine Bitcoin was $2,000. It's since shot up to $60,000 and sits currently today, December 2023, at $44,000. At the same time, Ethereum was at $140. It then since shot up to $4,800 and currently sits at a price today of $2,300. For this video, I have edited out some personal information such as my contact details and the names of anyone on the call itself. But this video has not been edited. It's been left as is when it was recorded. One other benefit of this recording is I can go back and see how I was thinking about crypto and investments back in 2017. Also, there are some predictions there that have come true. So see if you can spot them in the video and put some comments down. Put, put, some, uh, put your comments in the um, notes down below. Uh, let me know your thoughts. I also notice my speech, or should I say my presentation skills, have improved Improved uh, quite a lot. I did go to Toastmasters. I think I've been going to Toastmasters since. But you will notice all the filler words in the presentation. I've decided not to edit it out. I wanted to leave this webinar as authentic and as original as, as it was back in 2017. If you did not get into crypto or have not even decided to get into crypto since, I think this is a good webinar to watch. Um, if you like the information, I'll be giving out similar presentations about other kind of investments that I'll be making and that you can follow as well. So I will be back at the end of the webinar video. It's around one hour and 30 minutes long. I think one hour of presentation 30 minutes of discussion and questions answered at the end. But uh, I would suggest you watch the full video. If you are looking to invest in crypto or make any other investments, it's good to actually go back and see what I was thinking in 2017. And if you had watched the, the webinar, would you have decided to invest? One other element I might add is that I did offer opening crypto investment accounts for individuals just for £50 a month. So that money would be made back literally maybe the next day, next week, given the price of the crypto investments. You also see from the web webinar itself, the gains that can be made from crypto. There are some losses, but overall gains have been fantastic, possibly the best investment in the past 15 years. So without further ado, please enjoy the video. I'll be back at the other side to give a summary and uh, let you know what I think. Okay, so a bit about myself. Um, maybe you guys, most of you guys know me, but for recording purposes, I'm currently looking at property investing as a sort of major investment plan. So I have a few buy to lets. So I'm currently looking at a few commercial to residential opportunities. I'm looking at actually starting one project in the next few months. I'm a qualified mortgage advisor, have my CMAP certification, although I've not used it much. A qualified investment manager, this is like the um, certificate used, acquired by fund managers when they get into the um, fund management business. It's been of minor use, but um, again, all the textbook um, teachings don't necessarily really apply to real life situations. So um, I've not used that much, but it's been of help um, in the early stages of my investing. I regard myself as a self-taught economist. Um, I've been reading the economy for possibly, 
I said, come up to eight eight years on a daily basis, possibly doing five hours a day. So that amounts to quite a lot of hours of reading. I follow a lot of the US fiscal and monetary policies. They also apply to the UK. <clears throat> um, I've been trading and investing money for 20 years. Um, I think I'm now 38. I was um, spread betting in oil and silver um, currencies as well from the age of 18. Um, lost a lot, made a lot. Um, but again, it's the education that counts um, that will live with you for the rest of your life. <clears throat> I'll be managing my own pension investments. So I started my pension uh, six years ago. I've trained myself up in that, so I've managed to be get to gain 10% returns each year for the funds I have invested in. <clears throat> with regards to Bitcoin trading, um, my first trades were done in around October 2013. Um, best trade, which was which I made 700% in six weeks on the Litecoin trade. This was a buy and hold strategy rather than trading other coins because there were no other coins at the time. Um, due to my lack of education, um, I actually, after making 700%, I actually lost 500% of that 700. This was, again, due to lack of education, getting to the Bitcoin at the time. Um, I didn't do much research or didn't have a strategy in place. Um, come to today, I did actually hold on to the loss I call it a loss, it's still, it was break even more or less, slightly in profit over three years. So in this case, um, I held on for f three to four years, 2013 to 2017. And the portfolio is currently up 500% at the moment. Um, in terms of money, um, I'm going to talk about money a lot because it's important to everyone, I guess, um, whether you like it or not. Um, understanding and being able to use money will enable you to make more money in the future. So I've done a lot of creative use um, strategies of money, um, heavy use of loan interest loans, long-term credit cards, remortgaging properties, etc. Um, one of my recent deals, I've just bought a 3,000 square meter plot of land in Nigeria on a 0% credit card, which is 0% for 41 months. Um, if, you understand, if you know about the Nigerian currency, I think most of you guys do. Um, it's very... Week, week at the moment. So again, I've made some benefit on the currency side. <clears throat> I spent 10,000 or tens of thousands of pounds on education, many hours of self-development self -development and personal development. So this has aided in my approach and calmness to trading. I'm by nature university student, computer science. Um, alongside the property stuff I'm doing, I'm also building a fintech company, Final Salary. <clears throat> which is aiming to help people invest their pensions um, that they receive from work, the workplace. <clears throat> okay, this is the meeting agenda. Um, I'm possibly gonna try and get through this pretty quick, try and finish by quarter past nine now, it's, um, quarter past eight in a moment. So we're gonna look at what is Bitcoin and what is Bitcoin. Um, this will be explained in the next slide. Um, digital money, as we now know it in this uh, internet era, and the wallets to actually hold this money. Um, trust and decentralized markets, or I'll say businesses, um, we have to trust someone to hold our money, um, the person receiving also, or the person having to give the money, there has to be some trust in the, ex in the exchange. So we need a centralized party like a bank to um, facilitate that. And we'll see that Bitcoin is decentralized, we don't need a centralized, we don't need a um, central party so we don't need the, if we don't need a central party, it can be peer to peer. We trust each other. We send and receive from each other direct. <clears throat> We're going to look at the Bitcoin market in brief so far, how it's gone. We're going to look at altcoins. So everyone knows about Bitcoin, but there's around possibly 200 plus other coins in the market. Um, they are currently offering better returns than the Bitcoin itself and at lower prices. <clears throat> We're going to look at uh, pump and dump and scams. So with any opportunity, um, there are scams to be aware of, um, especially with the Bitcoin stuff, um, it's irreversible. So once your money's gone, it's gone. So we need to be very careful with that. <clears throat> We're gonna look at sort of emotional approach, sort of a, how to manage, understand, and not actually um, make good trades and not be greedy about making a lot of money. Um, be happy with making some profit rather than holding out to try and make more, but maybe lose, lose it all. <clears throat> So this is going to be more theory on this left-hand side. On the right-hand side, we're going to 
sort of look into actually investing into Bitcoin, um, how to research the markets, the sort of the main websites I've used myself and the exchanges. These are where you can buy, sell and hold your coins. Um, if you don't want to hold them on the exchange, you can get a wallet to hold them in. Um, obviously, there's some risks across these two. The exchange is, is someone else's business. The wallet is all on your own back. So, for example, if you've got a wallet on your computer or your laptop, you lose your laptop or your disk goes, you don't have a backup, you can lose all your money. So it's very high risk in terms of uh, <clears throat> um, managing your own money. There's no insurance. There's no one to call if you lose your money. <clears throat> um, after understanding all this, we all look into how to get into Bitcoin trading, i.e., you want to take £100, £200 of your money, you want to put it into the Bitcoin market and buy some coins and make some investments. So we'll look, briefly look at that. Um, I initially started with Bitbargain, which I think is a good um, resource to, to start with, um, UK based as well. And then also, once you've made some money, obviously you may want to get your money back out. Um, so we'll look at how to get your money back out into your UK bank account or Euro USD bank account. <clears throat> And following all this, I'll briefly go over again the risk management items or elements of investing. Um, the emotional challenges, um, it sounds very easy to talk about it. Um, look at the charts and think I could have gone in here, I could have gone in there. Um, once your money's in the market, um, it's going to be very emotional. So you have to be aware of this. <clears throat> For those who've traded before, you'll probably understand what I mean. <clears throat> Um, I don't think I've got this stocks, property versus Bitcoin and rate of return. I think I don't have this slide in here, I believe, but I can uh, refer to some of the other slides to talk about <clears throat> the returns we are seeing for stocks, property um, versus the Bitcoin market. Um, internet money is very fast, um, hence the rate of return you can get is very fast as well. And then finally, I'll show you some of my trades and some of the holdings I currently have. If anyone looking to uh, get in, they may want to copy what I've got or ask questions around what to invest in. Okay, what is Bitcoin and what, what's the difference? Bitcoin, Bitcoin, what's the difference? So when someone mentions Bitcoin, there's, um, it means two things. Um, there's Bitcoin, the actual technology for which um, manages all the um, transactions and the ledger. There's also Bitcoin, the currency, which is an application that sits on top of the Bitcoin technology. So we've got a currency making use of the ledger, and the ledger is known as the blockchain. <clears throat> so this diagram at the bottom, this really shows what the blockchain is all about. It's literally blocks of transactions, as you can see. So we've got block 51. There's maybe a transaction, so maybe Alice pays Bob £50. So that that's, it goes in the transaction history. So we've transferred value from Alice to Bob of £50. And that's the transaction history is now built up. And it shows all the transactions. So we can have Alice, Bob moving money between each other um, as the blocks are created. It's, it's also just literally a ledger showing all the transactions being made between Alice and Bob. <coughs> um, obviously, a, a block doesn't just contain one transaction for um, some in terms of currency, we can have up to 100 transactions in each block. But um, the blockchain literally means that each, the previous transaction block is linked to the next one. And hence, we end up with a chain of transactions. So if we were to start from zero in block, if we start from Alice having £50 and Bob having zero in block zero, once we get to block 54, block 54 will show the state of Alice's account and the state of Bob's account um, as it stands at block 54. <clears throat> so these blocks literally are created um, multiple times a day for all the transactions that are ongoing for the particular ledger. Um, please feel free to post any questions in the chat room, one if I'm going too fast or two if you have any questions on the current topic. So the blockchain is um, created by software, so there's no people involved. So this is literally, we've, we've removed the third party from, so I'm just trying, trying to get rid of this uh, thing on my screen. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so the, the blockchain is created by, is um, 
purely software, there's no people involved. So just give me a second. Sorry, there's no people involved. So um, in order to um, make perform transactions and transfer value, um, we need something that's going to store all this information. This is what the um, this is what the blockchain is is literally um, being developed for. It's going to log each and every transaction and transfer value um, as they go on. So we can have a hundred million people moving money between each other. The blockchain is going to log all this software. We don't need a centralized. We don't need a bank in the middle to um, accept our money, then move it to someone else. So the blockchain technology is of, is of massive interest because it gets rid of the um, centralized party, i.e., the bank. So we're talking Barclays, Western Union, Visa mainly as well. So you may see some of these businesses um, go out of business once the um, Bitcoin market um, takes shape in the consumer market. <laughs> So let's just uh, make sure when we say mention Bitcoin or when people mention Bitcoin, are they talking about the blockchain technology or they're talking about the first ever application or the currency, the actual Bitcoin itself that's currently valued at $2,000, are they talking about the currency? So going forward, I'll refer to blockchain and Bitcoin just to distinguish the difference between the actual um, application framework and the actual currency itself. Okay, so... um. The actual Bitcoin itself. So Bitcoin is the first application that was created and used the blockchain. I'm just trying to see if there's any chat when chat, chat messages going on. <clears throat> so it's the first application that used the blockchain. Um, the Bitcoin currency is basically a ledger of all the transactions of the Bitcoin um, money itself. Um, for those who have been following Bitcoin, it's currently at $2,000. When it initially started, it was um, literally free. It was being handed out for free. <clears throat> um, and just to make sure everyone understands the Bitcoin does not exist physically, and we see a lot of these images with bees on them, um, you can't physically take a metal coin and say it's a Bitcoin. Um, Bitcoin exists totally as computer bits and bytes, zeros and ones in the computer. So if someone tries to sell you one of these gold coins, um, mis just understand it's not, it's not worth anything. Okay, so looking at the um, Bitcoin price, I'm gonna sort of look at the currency itself. So um, I've been to the Crypto and Compare website just to have a look at the, um, get this chart for you guys to have a look. The Bitcoin price, um, this time last year, is trading just around the $500 mark. Um, today, it's now just jumped over the $2,000 mark. <clears throat> so this is a rise of 400% in uh, one year. So I actually was looking at Bitcoin myself. So I myself, at the point when I had an opportunity to invest, I thought um, $200 was high. I think I also remember seeing it at $50 as well. Um, I did have the opportunity to invest, but if you're gonna if you watch a lot of YouTube videos, you're you're gonna hear the same thing. Um, I was told about Bitcoin. I took no notice. I was told about Bitcoin. I thought it was too high. Um, this usually happens when you don't really understand what something is, but someone says maybe invest in it. So again, this is a lack of education kicking in. Where I could have bought this at two hundred and made ten times the money, or even at five hundred March twenty sixteen. I didn't even go in then. Um, well, I did have other investments. Um, if you look at the difference, 500 to 2,000, it's a 400% return in one year. Um, almost impossible in any other investment class. So digital money and wallets. Um, so the coins are purchased from exchanges. These are like, um, similar to when you buy stocks and shares, you'll send the broker a request, or you, nowadays you do it online. You say, I want to buy 50 shares of Vodafone, for example. You make that purchase and your account shows 50 shares. <clears throat> in the case of 
Bitcoin and digital money, you're going to say, I want to buy 50 Bitcoin or 10 Bitcoin. <clears throat> you'll send your money in, you'll get the coins into your account. It will show as 50 coins in your, in, in your exchange account. Um, there's ways you can store your money. Um, you can store it, you can keep it in exchange if you're happy to do so, or you can store it in a wallet. Um, a wallet application is literally like a, your own purse um, managed by yourself. As I mentioned, there's no organization um, managing Bitcoin. So at the end of the day, once you have your money in your wallet, it's 100% your responsibility. And wallets can be, um, it's literally an, a computer application. You can ha have an application on your computer, um, have a com your application on your telephone. We can have a, a web web application, which is online. Um, the web application and exchanges are not um, too different. I guess the only benefit is f having your money on exchange. The exchange has uh, billions of um, value in terms of um, Bitcoin or dollars going through it every day. So um, that, well, if you want to store your money, I would suggest store it with an exchange that has some value. Um, an online wallet business, they can close down very quickly because they only make they make their money from people transferring coins back and forth. But if someone stores their money in a wallet, you're unlikely to move it for a good few months. So if the on if the web application web online wallet has any cash flow issues, they could possibly just shut down and keep your money. So I prefer in terms of storing my money, I'll store first on the computer, um, second on my phone, but not. Or I won't store 100% of my money on the phone. It'll be part computer, part phone, and part exchange, part phone, for example. So all the preferences, computer, phone, exchanges, and web online. Um, for third point here, there's no insurance. So if your money's currently in a UK bank, you're covered for, I think, £85,000 of losses. Um, anything other than that, you're not going to get any money. In terms of your wallet, um, there's no there's no insurance at all. So if your computer, or your phone has a virus or disk issues or memory issues, um, you could lose all your money. So in this case, uh, if you're going to get get yourself to have maybe hold five thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars of Bitcoin, um, you're going to have to be very comfortable with uh, holding that amount of money and having responsibility in terms of um, where you're going to store it. Um, ensuring you don't, you're not going to get a virus, make sure you've got backups in case your disk goes, etc. <clears throat> um, last point as well, um, online wallet and exchanges. Um, I'll say Bitcoin is very mature now. Um, three years ago, there was the famous Japan MT Gox um, scenario where a massive exchange went bankrupt, taking everyone's money. Um, exchanges now pretty solid these days. Um, they're making good money, so it's unlikely they're going to go down. But it's always a risk where you don't have your money in your own pocket or your own wallet. Um, could it go missing overnight if something happens to the exchange itself or to the web application or the web guys who own your online wallet? So um, just be careful when you store your money um, online. Online and exchanges, I don't. I try not to store as much. Um, Although, if you're comfortable with, you, you can do. <clears throat> like I've mentioned, this word centralization and decentralization, what does, what does this mean? Okay, so we're going to look at today's money when we want to transfer, say, let's say Alice is on the left-hand side and Bob is on the right. If Alice wants to transfer money to Bob, we have to go through a number of intermediaries. So currently, if I want to send money, I might, I might use the Visa payment system put in sort code account number or some other identifier on the recipient side. Um, that then goes to third party PayPal, Western Union Visa MasterCard. They then maybe hold the money for a day or a few hours before they then transfer it on. <clears throat> so what's what do we see just wrong with this current system before the Bitcoin came along? Um, it's been standard for hundreds of years, but with the introduction of Bitcoin, we can now see some differences and problems with the current uh, centralized system. So centralized system is fairly slow um, to move your money. Um, you should take two to three days. They have the faster payment system now. 
which is a good comp competition for Bitcoin itself. But again, it's still a centralized account. If you were to transfer 200 pound, sorry, 200,000 pound across these entities, um, it's going to be very costly. Um, but I think a chap's transfer is like 35 pound. Um, when I've been buying properties, I've paid like chaps payment thirty five pounds, sixty pounds to move money across. Um, then it takes a few days as well. <clears throat> um, visibility of the money. If you're making a lot of money, um, there's all obviously the money laundering um, things to consider. Um, although some people don't want the banks knowing about their business, so the visibility of your money is easily seen. Um, Again, these intermediaries are people as well. So someone can see, if you go to a bank teller and say you want to deposit 2 million, they have access to your account. So yes, you're depositing 2 million, they know your account number, etc. cetera. Um, again, the visibility leads to more fraud. <coughs> um, partial control, um, we're sending our money, but we're only sending it to an intermediary. Um, they can choose to not forward the money. Um, they can go bust during your transfer which means you have no control of getting your money back. Um, during the Lehman's crisis, for example, um, a lot of mortgages, um, investors who had bonds based on mortgages literally didn't get their money because the bank went bankrupt and they decided not to pay out because that's what a bond is. It's all, you get paid for the, for the risk of the investment you've, you've made. <clears throat> um, and number four on this, number five here, the people involved in... Uh, is the current uh, centralized centralized system? Obviously, there's massive opportunity for fraud. If you're going to spend your money in a restaurant or bar, um, it's very easy for someone to copy your card details and then reuse it. <coughs> so the items in red here on this page for the centralized system at the top, the red ones are sort of the negatives for the current sy centralized system. Um, benefits currently for the centralized system: um, there's some form of insurance. And also, it's, it's um, very well understood by the consumers. Obviously, it's been it's been in in the market for hundreds of years, so everyone understands how to spend money. <clears throat> okay, moving on to um, Bitcoin, the decentralized. Um, decentralized just means we've got rid of the people in the middle, so there's no PayPal, Western Union, or Visa um, involved in the transactions. Money literally moves from person to person direct, but via the ledger system, which is the Bitcoin network. Bitcoin for capital B. Um, so just briefly, this is literally the opposite of what I've just mentioned for the centralized system. We've got fast transfer of money. Um, it's very cheap. I think someone sent uh, maybe 50 million pound across the Bitcoin network. I think it cost him like maybe 500 pound or so. Um, if you've done that with a centralized system, that might have come up to, uh, I don't know, maybe five figures or so. <clears throat> Transfers are anonymous. Um, each person at the end of the transaction has a address. We call it a Bitcoin address. So you literally send and receive to these addresses, such that um, your name, etc., your account details are not seen by by the ledgers, by the um, anyone in specifically. They can't take that 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 piece of information and take your money. <clears throat> um, you sort of have full control or there's no people involved, so control is at the, um, or at least it's, it's um, at the at risk of the com computer program. Um, given it's been running for quite a few years, there's a massive trust in the system, such that when you send your money, it's going to perform the same operation as it did. It's going to send the money in the 30 minutes it's determined, or two minutes, um, as agreed. And um, the computing power behind the Bitcoin network is um very massive um there's something called mining and these miners are uh, in place to actually um check all the transactions in the bitcoin network and ensure the ledger is correct so um the computing power behind bitcoin is um pretty pretty massive and given the amount of uh volume that's currently going through the um bitcoin network <clears throat> currently for the bitcoin um negatives for it at the moment is currently uninsured um, if you send your money through the network and it gets lost or you send to the wrong address, um, it's literally lost forever. There's no comeback. It's a sort of a one-way system. <clears throat> the Bitcoin um, 
protocol, I'd say the, the um, actually technology and the currency itself is also misunderstood by most of the population. Um, I think I got in a taxi the other day and I told the guy, I've got some Bitcoin and said, am, am I doing some illegal stuff? So um, we're still at that stage where the man on the street thinks Bitcoin is just used for illegal purposes and it has no value in terms of um, true currency or being used to buy um, goods from the supermarkets or online. Okay, we're going to go on to wallets and have a look at some wallets. Um, is everyone hearing me okay? Um, if you want to put a message in the chat just to confirm. Cheers. Okay, so this is one of the wallets I'm currently using at the moment <clears throat> um, to hold some of my um, investments. So this is an online wallet. Um, the benefit of this one, it syncs up all my accounts across devices. So I've got, uh, I've got the wallet on my desktop PC, which stays in my house. I've got the wallet on my laptop, which I'm taking around with me. If I travel, I've got it on my laptop. If I'm working, I've got access to it. So that's pretty good. So I can access my money while I'm around. Um, it's also available on the mobile as well. So I can actually transact on the mobile. Um, this all stays in sync, so which is pretty good. Um, if you had a desktop only or PC only wallet um, in the early days, which I did, um, if I'm at work, I can't do anything with my money. Um, you'll see why this was a problem uh, in 20, 2013 when I made my initial investments. <clears throat> um, only problem with this particular wallet, um, although we, there's a Bitcoin currency, there, there are other coins as well. Um, this wallet only has, I think, four or five coins. So it can't hold um, every coin that you may wish to trade. Um, another thing as well, um, the actual private key to actually access your money is an eight word phrase. Um, I don't know, it sounds, like, I don't know, for me, eight words is maybe not enough to protect uh, maybe tens of thousands of pounds. Um, problem with this, if anyone sees these eight words, they can actually put this eight words into the Jack's wallet and see your money. And then obviously what they're gonna do next is transfer it to their own account. So this, that's some of the negatives of this wallet. Um, I've got some money on this, but not a lot. I tend to just use this for my day trading. So if I'm around, I can move money from my wallet to, to an exchange, buy and sell, and then move the money back. <clears throat> um, the exchange I initially started with was this one, BTCE exchange. Um, it's been around for quite some time. I believe it's, uh, I think it's Russian owned, um, but it's been around for a while, never had any issues with it. My initial investments in 2013 was with this exchange, uh, although I've now moved on to sort of other recent exchange exchanges. I've never lost any money with this exchange, so it's been pretty robust. Um, what I'll say to you though, if you're, you are trading, etc., either get, get your money onto the exchange, make your trade and move your money onto a wallet if you can. Um, you can keep some money on the wallet. Um, what I like to think of when I put my money on the exchange is that one, if there's a lot of volume going through the exchange, um, it just takes maybe one or two incidents for, for someone to report back the exchange and people will then just move their money off. So the volume going through the exchange literally keeps the exchange honest. I believe. Um, second to that as well, you may have ten thousand pound, ten thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin. Um, I've seen guys doing a million pound trades on this exchange. So um, just keep in mind, there's other people with more money than you. So don't be scared of keeping some money here, because the, why would you go to? Why would you hack a ten thousand dollar account when you can hack a million dollar account? So um, that's a good uh, thing to keep in mind when you're on the exchange. Don't be too scared. If you're going to be doing some trading during the day, it's perfectly okay. I found so far to keep your money on the exchange. <clears throat> as, again, as mentioned, this exchange is online. So for some reason, this site goes down or company goes bankrupt. Um, your money's sat here. Once they switch it off, you can't move your money. So you're going to be at the will of the business owners to be honest and say, okay, I can see you've got this, 
send me your address, I'll send your money to you. So there's always positives and negatives with uh, this stuff. It's uh, managed by computers and individuals. Um, very early stage um, technology as well. So it's not ironed out. It's not very, very safe as you would find in today's banking system. But um, it's been working for three to four years. Um, I've not had any issues with my trades. Okay, so um, Bitcoin so far. Um, here's some sort of the news items I've picked out from the recent week. So Bitcoin hits uh, $1,900, market cap of $4 billion. So this was two days ago. I think the price now today is possibly $2,000 now. So it's actually gone up already by 100 or so dollars. <clears throat> um, what I find interesting is the, um, the cryptocurrency market cap tops $60 billion. So if you look at the um, current fiat um, sort of, I'll say, um, market cap, how much fiat money is in trans transition in the world, um, possibly way over a trillion. Just to take, for example, I think the US has 20 trillion of debt. So if you just think about the Bitcoin value being 2000 today with a 60 billion market cap, if the US, for example, decided to move its debt into Bitcoin, we're now looking at multiplying the market cap by maybe it's going to be maybe 2,000 times as much. And that's only the US debt. The um, transactions throughout the, the world economy is going to add up to maybe hundreds of trillions of pounds. Once this uh, Bitcoin technology gets into the consumer market, um, given that we can move money across the world, Bitcoin is a single currency. So just like we have the EU enabling you to use the euro across 28 countries, Bitcoin can be used across the world. So what's going to happen when we can move money across the world very quickly with no exchange rates at low cost? Um, we can see the Bitcoin price um, ramping up very, 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 very high. Some people are quoting $10,000, $20,000 a Bitcoin. So um, I'll, go, I'll ask myself now, is 1900 too high? Um, it, I think, to be honest, it's very, very cheap. But obviously, you, need, you still need the money to buy it. But um, give it two, two to five more years, we, we may see um, the 10,000 mark. But I'm thinking that might just happen um, by, I don't know, 2020 easily. So you can see some here, Bitcoin price likely to hit 3,500 this year. So we're only into May and it's already doubled. So again, it's a possibility of it actually doubling again. Um, this stuff moves very quick. It's, uh, it's internet money. So you can move at the speed of the internet. If you can think about how fast it takes, how how quick you can send a WhatsApp message to someone anywhere in the world, um, this is what we can do with, with money at the moment. Okay, as with the positives, there's also negatives. So there have been some negative news about Bitcoin in the past. This, these are sort of recent ones. So obviously with any rally, you're gonna get a correction. So here we've seen that Bitcoin crashes 20%. So we're talking maybe if it's gone up from $500 to $2,000, we're looking at correction back to 1600. But if someone's got in at the right time, um, I think you'll be perfectly happy with take, to take a 20% um, temporary loss in profits. Um, it's possibly gonna come back and go further up in the future. <clears throat> um, people then asking, about Bitcoin crashing, etc. Um, we have to remember this is a computing technology. It takes one bad programmer or one bug in the application to affect the price. Um, like I said, it's very, very early days. Um, issues will need to get ironed out. Um, there's a lot of stories and features being added to the coins, which um, I think the community now is trying to get Bitcoin into the consumer market. Um, if any of you guys have been following Bitcoin, there was something about a SegWit. Um, this is literally to try and expand the number of transactions in each block. Because if we don't have um, space to do the transactions, we can't actually spend money very quickly. Okay, so um, a question regarding the wallets. Um, do wallets have some sort of spread or charge for their use? So yes, um, in terms of moving your money from your wallet to an exchange, um, I believe there's a possibly a tenth of a percent charge for moving your money. 
Um, depends on what you're going to do with your money. If you're going to just spend it occasionally, um, I think the charge is pretty much okay. If you're investing, um, again, I think it's also okay. I've said to a few friends, if you've made a 200%, um, don't cry over spending like 1% in, a, in the fees to get your money out the uh, at the investment. So there's a minimal charge. Um, I think it's usually 0 0.00001 of the coin itself. Um, some exchanges do it on a fixed value, some do it on a percentage. <laughs> okay, let me just get rid of this chat. So it's the first time I'm using a go to meeting from home, so I'm trying to get used to it. <clears throat> okay, so looking back, so we got Bitcoin. This is what we've been talking about this um, this evening. Um, Bitcoin with lower, lowercase b, the ticker symbol BTC. But there, there are other coins in the market. So these are the coins um, you guys are probably going to be interested in investing in, um, using it as a sort of a platform to get into the Bitcoin market and understand the technology. Um, you won't need much money to invest, and also you'll sort of learn a lot. I think I believe once you've got some money in, you're going to pay attention to the market. You're going to learn about the market, and it's very easy to try and say I'm going to learn about it with no money invested. But I don't think you have the emotional will or desire to research and understand if you don't have any any skin in the game, as they call it. Okay, so these are sort of some of the other coins. So these are the sort of top ten organized by market capitalization. So here we see um, Bitcoin with thirty three thousand thirty three billion dollar capitalization, current price two thousand and forty five dollars. So this was taken, uh, I think, just hour and a half, two hours ago. So this is pretty recent. Um, we've got Ethereum. Um, I'll leave it up to you guys to sort of, you can um, sort of Google these uh, coins. There's enough information online. Um, so out of these ones, I've invested in Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ripple, Litecoin, um, Ethereum Classic, and Dogecoin. So those are the ones I've touched in the past. The others, are, and Stellar as well. Um, all the others I'm not, touched yet but um the opportunity comes i will be investing in some of these <clears throat> and what's of interest here i'll mention a few things so you can see the the prices of some of these um vary obviously bitcoin is the initial coin um it's now valued at 2045 dollars um although it's been the longest coin i think it's got the most computing power and most um i'll say consumer investment because it's been around the longest and it was the first um if I, for example, take Monero versus Litecoin, so Monero is very, a very recent coin, whereas Litecoin actually came out just after Bitcoin. So just bear in mind the price does not determine how long the coin has been around. Um, I'll go through what you should look at in terms of investment strategies if you want to invest. Um, there's a few things I look at when I decide to go into a, a coin for the first time. Um, it's definitely not the price because uh, you can see here, um, it, it depends on what's happening to the coin. You have to do your research around that in itself. <clears throat> okay, so the market cap, we can see Ethereum has come up second, Ripple's um, third place, and I think Nemo coin, that is NEM, at, at fourth. <clears throat> okay, circulation supply. So um, for those guys who know about investing, the market cap is literally the price times um, the availability of coins. Obviously, you can get your coin up in the rankings if you decide to release um, billions of coins and you times it by the price, your market cap is going to go up. So the market cap doesn't mean it's the best coin. It may just mean these guys have billions and billions of coins available on the market and the price may be very low. So you have to bear in mind, there's um, if you're into stocks and, stocks and shares, this is similar similar stuff, price versus available shares on the market to trade. This this determines the actual market cap of the company. Um, what is very important when I trade, I look at the volume. Um, the volume sort of determines the liquidity. And um, the more volume there is, the easier it is to trade. Um, if you're going on a low volume coin, um, the spreads between buy and sell is going to be very big. So you're going to have to make a good profit in order to break even. So I'll try and stay away from um, low volume coins. I want need to see some volume um, on the coin before I trade it. 
This just means the spread's not going to be too big. I don't need to stay in the coin too long to make some profit. Okay, on the far side, we've got the um, percentage gains of the coin. So um, this is what is quite fascinating about this um, investment opportunity, um, the Bitcoin um, technology and this, the actual um, opportunity to actually invest. We can see this is um, percentage gains and losses just over 24 hours. So Bitcoin itself has gone up 1%, 1.75% in the last 24 hours. So this is literally 7 p.m. Saturday night to 7 p.m. Um, two hours ago. So if you had invested in Bitcoin 7 p.m. yesterday, you would have made 1.75%. And we can see Ethereum, it's done 15.14%. So um, I say to people, if you'd gone in the stock market, you'd probably be expecting this kind of return in one year. So we're now talking in 24 hours, you've made what you, can, you would have made in the stock market in one year's time. <clears throat> um, obviously, there's some losses as well we have to consider. So um, I'll show you something interesting soon because the best coin versus the worst coin today, um, you'll see the upside of this investment opportunity. So Ripple's gone down um, a bit, 4% in the last 24 hours. And bear in mind, this is just 24 hours. If you've been invested for a week, the gains will be larger. The losses, seeing red, could also be larger as well. <clears throat> but overall, um, if you go down to Doge, Dogecoin at the bottom, that's got we've got 51% return on that one. So you can see the price of this one is um, two-tenths of a cent at the moment. So if you decided to put in $100, um, I think you'll get out, I got my calculator, it might be 2,000 or 20,000 coins, etc. So you could be making $200 times 51% 51, 51 return, which will give you $100, $100 return in 24 hours in that case. <clears throat> um, we've also, also got Bitcoin. You can see that one's made 100% return in 24 hours. So again, that one is four tenths of a, it's four hundredths of a uh, cent, I think that's showing. Um, excuse my maths, but you can see the price anyway. So that one's again a very cheap coin. Um, again, you don't need much money to go in. If you put in hundred dollars in, you'll get quite a few coins out. Um, you would have made a hundred percent return there if you invested yesterday at seven pm. Um, one thing I do want want to mention. Um, as a strategy as well, what I try and do, I want to put in enough money or buy enough coins such that I can sell out and still have some invested. So if I put in 200, if I, if I acquire 10,000 10, coins, um, I want to pull out my investment, but still, in, still be invested. So if I buy 10,000 coins, I may want to pull 5,000 pound, 5,000 coins out when I've doubled my money and then leave the rest in to grow over the weeks, the months, or maybe years. So that's a, another strategy to consider. Okay, so we've gone from, this is top ordered by market cap. So these are the top best performing coins over the last 24 hours um, taken 7 p.m. today. So we can see there are better coins. So uh, if you look down the list, the top, I don't know if it's 10 or 13 coins here, we can see the best performer there has been the um, digital note. Um, I've not invested in this. I have no idea what it's all about. Um, I do come to this. Uh, I'll show you. I'll, I'll give the URL for this website soon. I do come to this page just to check what's happening in the market. I, I can see this one's made 220% return in 24 hours. I'll then go and check what is this coin all about. Um, I can then look at the uh, market cap and the, well, the price is the price. I'll look at the market cap. I'll look at the volume. So I can see the volume is very low. It's like 1 million. So again, the spread might be massive. Um, the next one, red coin, um, market cap 21 million. So you can see the Bitcoin was 33 billion. This, we're talking bit millions here now. Um, sorry. Market cap also for red coin, you can see the circulation is quite big. They've got 28 billion coins in circulation. So this obviously has made the market cap very... Well, it's put into the millions, but again, that's skewed by the amount of coins in circulation. And the volume on red coin is slightly higher, 3,087, so 3 million. 
at this point so it's slightly higher than the digital note so this one may have a, a shorter spread in terms of how long you need to keep your money in the market to make your good return <clears throat> so again just you can just look down the list you can you can see what's happening here in terms of the returns so if you uh, make your investments yesterday 7 p.m these are the opportunities you could have had if you put some money in um me myself i've got a digital buy so i had that investment i think i bought that one four days ago i think that's currently up for me 130 <clears throat> percent but i've only put in 400 dollars so it's not massive amounts but um, it all adds up over time and it's um, very early stages because i've only had four days in in that market okay so now these these are at 7 p.m today these were the worst performing coins that, are, that came up um what was quite surprising um we can see from here the best coin is 219 percent the worst coin is 11 percent so in terms of upside gain downside gain if you had picked the worst coin 24 hours ago you would have lost 11 percent if you had picked the best coin you would have made uh, 220 percent um anything in between goes as well so um if you're going to lose 11 percent possibility to gain maybe 200 so this is the kind of opportunity that exists in the bitcoin market um today and i've just elaborated this here so you can see um just um pulling out these coins 219 versus 10 percent downside so from all the coins in the list um you could have picked something you wouldn't have lost much if you stayed in for 24 hours <clears throat> Okay, so you've seen a few coins on the on the list here and here as well. And what we have to be careful of is um, pump and dump schemes. Um, because this is computer software, it's very easy for computer programmers to create a coin, um, build a website that looks very snazzy, um, put a good story behind it, and then start marketing on the troll sites on Facebook, Instagram, just saying, a new coins out doing this doing that etc what usually happens with some of these pump and dump coins is that someone's possibly said they're going to re release maybe 10 billion coins um, the person creating the coin may keep a billion they'll do the marketing wait for people to buy up the coin and get the price up then next thing will happen the person will then just sell their billion coins sort of deflating the market and putting the price back down so um you have to be aware if you see a coin that's doing very good, um, it's more, much more important to do your research and take your time. Um, I'll say do your research twice and maybe three times. Go on all the resources you can, YouTube, um, the coin market cap website I just showed you and all the other ones. Um, try and look for details about the coin. Do some Google as well. Look at the volume. Uh, look at the charts. How's the, how's the coin been moving? Are you seeing lots of spikes or is it gradually going up? Um, pump and dump used to be a very, very problematic in the early days um, when people just uh, cloned a coin and put up a website and tried to sell it. Um, another thing to be aware of, yes, the coins are fairly cheap. As you can see here, like two tenths or two hundredths of a cent. Um, just because it's cheap shouldn't mean you should buy it. Um, again, it's liable to pump and dump, so it's um, very critical to do your your research. My, myself, I've actually bought Ethereum yesterday evening, so you can see the price is $148. So I haven't gone for a cheap coin, but um, it's had some good news. I think it went up 30% yesterday, the day before yesterday as well. There's even more good news on it. So I've invested at 100, and I think I went in at $128 yesterday just because there's some good news i believe coming out on ethereum it may be the next coin to reach a thousand dollar mark so again this might be a long long-term investment for me so I'm, I'm in at the moment i'll just keep abreast of the news um and keep an eye on my investments and see how it goes but again just be aware of pump and dump um cheap doesn't mean good if it makes 200 percent in the day doesn't mean it's good either um my i think i went into Digi, Digibuy, I think, uh, after it had a 200% um, gain on, uh, I think, the 3rd of May. 
sorry, it was four days ago actually. So talking nineteenth or seventeenth of May. Um it had a two hundred percent rise. So I had done some research on the coin, it looked good. I actually went in after the two hundred two hundred percent rise. I actually lost fifty percent of my money um soon after. It had a correction, but I actually held on to it um through that correction and it's now gone up to like hundred and thirty percent return. So now I've doubled my money, but soon after I went in, I actually lost fifty fifty percent of my money. But again, I didn't put all my money in. I put in what I could afford to lose. So I think I put in like $400. And then I left that in. I think that's now gone up to $1,000 or so. Okay, um, just a reminder, the low volume coins. Um, I say stay away, but you can still invest with small amounts of money. Just don't put in a lot because when you have low volume, it's at risk of um, moving pretty fast and fast movement could be to the upside or the downside. Um, very important not to uh, risk all your money. You want to be in the game long enough to make money. So if it means taking a 10% return um, and not waiting for 100, then that's a good practice until you're comfortable with the investment itself. We've done enough research um, for that. <clears throat> okay, I thought I'd include uh, this particular slide. It's... um. Part of the emotional and sort of a fin um, investment behavior, you have to sort of be aware of your money itself and the actual greed. Um, everyone's greedy by nature. We want to put our money in. If we get 10%, we're going to wait for 20. When it gets to 20, we're going to wait for 30. When it gets to 30, we're going to wait for 50. When it gets to 50, we're going to wait for 100. So um, we need to sort of control this and just understand I've made money and lost money already over the past three years i'm showing you guys this investment today i've made new investments yesterday as well that, has, that have profited so just make sure just just understand there's opportunity tomorrow um, next week next month next year to trade this stuff you just want to put your money in make some money um just secure it make sure you're, you've got enough money to continue investing um, also, with that third point, you need to be comfortable with being in a negative position. Um, the highest stressful point in investing is the seconds after your money is in the market. Um, I've invested long enough now to know that once you put your money in the market, it's likely to go down, go negative, or maybe oscillate between positivity and negativity. You might go up ten dollars. You find yourself up ten dollars, then you might find yourself down twenty dollars then back up to zero, back up $1, down to 30, then maybe up 20%, for example. So again, you have to be able to, um, your emotions are going to play havoc with you. You need to sort of understand the price movements. So hopefully you've done your research on the, of the coin, or, you, or you've done enough analysis of price movements of the coin to understand it can go down, it can go up. Ask yourself what's caused it to go down, ask yourself what's caused it to go up. Because understanding the reasons will mean you're not going to be very, you're not going to be scared of being negative. Um, I found with investing, you have to be fairly comfortable with losing some money. Um, this is something that's acquired over time. Um, unless you're comfortable with being negative or actually closing a losing trade, it's going to be very hard for you to um, contain your emotions. Um, I've lost. I'm going to show you one of my trades or talk about one of my trades later. Um, this is the one I made 700% and lost 500%. So um, at what point, why didn't I get out? For, for example, you may ask, but I'll explain all of that stuff um, when I get to the slide. Um, what I've found is uh, once your money's in the game, if you've put in money that you're really, really comfortable with losing, um, you need not care about the money when, you're, when you've got it invested. Um, you just want to get yourself invested because you don't care about the money you you can leave it in the market understanding it's going to grow over time and um, we have to remember the Bitcoin investments move very very quickly you've seen the percentage growth 24 hour returns um, it can double or triple in 24 hours I've seen some double in a, in, within an hour itself um, some you can lose 20, 30, 40% in a day, or only for it to come back up 200%. So that also happens as well. Um, fundamental thing here is understand what you're doing, 
be comfortable with your investment, understand it's going to go down, understand it's going to go up, um, have a plan in place when you get in. So um, I'm going to sort of talk about some of my um, approaches when I'm investing myself. So what I do, I have a plan for my investment. So um, I've done some research, brief research on some coins. So there's the what, the where and the when. So the question of the what is, what, which coin am I going to invest in? What coin am I going to invest in? So this is sort of determined by, I look at quite a few things, the price action, the volume, the market cap, sort of the um, price in history, sort of look at the charts and the volumes. Um, when is it spiked up? Is it spiked up just on volume or is it spiked up for some other reason? So you usually see the volume increase on the, on the, on the chart at some point but is it caused, it's usually caused by some news so either good news or bad news so good news could mean um, someone's buying a lot of the currency or they've added the coin to another exchange or there's been some legislation i.e. the government is now I think recently they've now legislated that Bitcoin is valid currency I think that's in Japan and Russia so obviously you can see the Bitcoin price going up now um, due to this news, this just this, this means that people in Japan and Russia can now use Bitcoin and transact Bitcoin legally. There's no need to hide or be concerned about government locking down websites in those countries. Um, where am I going to invest? So there's um, multiple exchanges to buy your money from. Um, which one offers the best service? Which one's going to be up and working all the time? Which one's fast enough so you can actually do your trades to get in and get out? Um, also, which one's got a good price? Um, some may skew the price, etc. Um, some may charge you um, more fees than the other to move your money around. So that needs to be taken into consideration. So I guess you should do some research on exchanges, find out how they operate, do Google it, see what people are using, see the comments, etc. And then the cases when you, when are you going to buy the coin? Um, what price do you want to get in, and what price do you want to exit? Um, very prudent to know a price to get in um, even more prudent to know when you're going to exit if you've got a plan to exit when you've made 30% then that's a good thing to do um, don't try and go for more gains you can wait for 35 or 40 just for the market to turn down and you're going to lose your 30% so what you can do or what I've done in the past I'll try and take profits and leave some in invested so if it comes back down I'm not going to lose um, too much money in that case or all my investment or all my profits okay second point invest what you are comfortable losing um, law of percentages if you lose 100% you're not going to lose 100% of your money it takes it, your money will be worth very little but it won't be 100% due to due to law of percentages if you invest 100 pound and you lose 50% you have still got 50 pound in the game but that's, that's, that just means you need 100% gain to get back to where you were before. So um, again, understanding the money's going to go down and maybe go up. Um, just when you start off, um, be, invest what you're comfortable losing. So there might be £300, for example. You can try and grow that given the rate of return on this stuff. If you put £500 in for the whole year, um, it's, not, it's not impossible to reach like a 5K 10k um, with a year of trading given you can double your money in 24 hours if you've seen or maybe triple so that's okay don't don't you don't need to put in too much to make a lot here if you've got the patience um third thing very important this is i made the mistake early on is aim to get your initial investment out of the trade so when i made my initial uh i think i had litecoin investment it went up 700 percent um this point i never thought of because I made 700% yet yeah, I didn't get my initial money out of the trade before it turned back and went back to a, well, I lost a lot of money off or prof profits because I didn't get my investment out, first of all. And second, I didn't take any profits as well. What I do like to do now after I've taken my initial investment out, I like to just trade with previous profits to make more profits. Um, once you get to this stage, I think the emotions are very calm. Um, You'll realize when you once once your money is out you've taken some profit and um, i think it's nice just to take your investment out and then just pay yourself some money 
just for the sake to know it's not been a, a total waste of time. Like you've, if you've invested your time, you don't want it to be a total waste. So take some money for for yourself to spend, etc. Buy something to remind yourself that you've made some money. Um, <clears throat> fifth point is to keep an eye on your money. This is um, most important. You don't want to put a investment on and not look at it for five days. The speed of this, the speed that this stuff moves, means you could lose money very quickly, or you can make money very quickly. So your thirty percent gain may come in twenty four hours. So you've met your target. So you want to get out. So it's very important to just check. I've got a portfolio app. I'll show you some on further slides. You can just put in your holdings, and it will just show you your gains. It takes me uh, less than two minutes to check my money, the my investments. So I just click on my phone, I have a look, everything's okay, I'll close it and I'm done for the day. Or maybe for the hour, if you're tempted to look, you can be looking every five minutes. Um, don't be scared to take a loss or move to another coin. There's always an investment opportunity somewhere. If the coin you picked is not performing as you expected, um, best to take the minor loss and move into another opportunity. An um, opportunity that you've researched, obviously, not a random choice. Um, bear in mind, um, if you've not done tr trading before or maybe done anything with Bitcoin, your first trade can be the cost of your education. So if you want to just imagine you may lose all your money that you put in on your first trade. So how, ask yourself how much you're going to put in to learn about this stuff. We've seen the possible profits in this game, in this investment opportunity. Um, how much you want to pay to get educated to make these kind of gains. Um, this is the money for your education. Um, I think my first investment was like £3,000 or so. Um, again, this stuff went up very quick, came back, um, made 700%, that came back. So I was left with 300% or 200% profit. But um, I then I've had to let, wait for two to three years for that to then rise again before I took my money back out. So all the above, most of the above items I didn't have <clears throat> um, three or four years ago, but now today I'm trading with uh, these um, six, first six points that you see here. Okay, I'm going to try and speed up this. Uh, I'm going to try to speed up the presentation. It's already quarter past nine already. <clears throat> um, if you send me an email, I'll leave my email address at the end or pink, put in the chat. I'll send you my email address. You can get a copy of the slides. So, um, or I can make this uh, information available. So places to do research. Um, these are the four sites I mainly use. Um, coin market cap. It's where I've just shown you the um, prices of the coins. Um, crypto compare. Very similar to um, coin market cap. Again, it's analyzing all the coins on the market. Coindesk is a major retailer for Bitcoin. So they they are sort of um, blogging about anything happening in the Bitcoin space for most of the popular coins. So Ethereum has been on the news and obviously Bitcoin surpassing $2,000. Again, if you guys want to get educated, um, I'll say go on YouTube and type in Bitcoin. Um, these are some of the search terms I've used for my learning. So Bitcoin, Bitcoin trading, Bitcoin mining, Bitcoin explain, Bitcoin wallets and documentaries and news, um, all important stuff. Um, there are other guys doing um, videos as well. You can hear about their experience with Bitcoin investing. Okay, exchanges. So this is a picture of one exchange. This is what I've got now. This is the exchange I'm now using for most of my investments because it's got all the other smaller coins. So this one is a uh, Poloniex. We can see here the chart for Ethereum versus um, Bitcoin. So this is sort of like similar to currency trading. We've got a coin versus another coin. Oh, we got sterling versus dollar, sterling versus yen, sterling versus euro. This is similar stuff. We're sort of buying and buying and selling coins. We can call them currencies, but they're coins, etc. To try and pick up the one that's going to move the fastest. <clears throat> So another one I've used, um, Bitfinex, for one or two purchases. Another good um, exchange. Most exchanges are very reliable. I would say um, just sign up to them anyway, get an account. You can either just go in and have a look 
and get familiar with the um, exchange itself because you never know when opportunity comes where you may have to use the exchange. So it's always good to have the accounts in place um, ready to use if, uh, if you need them. B2C is the original one I used um, when I first started. Um, it's been very reliable. Um, I was on this one for like two to three years. I've sent them probably maybe £4,000 worth of cash. I've sent them, it's gone into the account okay. This is when I was investing for myself and two other friends. We put some money together. We sent £5,000 to this to these guys. They put it on the account. We bought our coins, took, took them to our wallet, etc. And then obviously we done did our investments on the exchange. Okay, so if you're looking to get into Bitcoin, so this is the stuff where you maybe will probably interest you the most. If you're looking to get into Bitcoin, I buy some. I, I recommend this site, bitbargain.com. Um, the prices are slightly higher here, but if you just want to simply buy some today and have some to trade, <clears throat> um, this is the place to um, go to for if you're starting off. <clears throat> and just bear in mind, you don't have to buy one Bitcoin. You can buy um, fractions of. So here's like five tenths of a Bitcoin, um, £82. So you can buy this. This five tenths or £82 will buy a lot of the other altcoins like the Digibyte, for example, which is, uh, I believe, is two tenths of a cent now. So converting this into dollars may amount to hundred dollars. You can buy hundred dollars worth of um, Bitcoin, for example, which is not a bad um, investment. You can call it your education. So spend a hundred pound, buy some Bitcoin, understand how to transfer it to the exchange, um, buy the coin you want, and then try and make some money on that hundred pound. Um, it's educational money, as I said. Um, you may lose it, but you, most likely you may make some money, etc. Um, getting out. So um, this wasn't available three years ago. Um, when I put my money into the exchange, I had no idea of how to get the money out. But um, I've recently set this up uh, last month. So this is Crypto Pay. I've actually got a debit card to actually get my money out, which is quite good. So when you've made your profits of 200%, 300% or whatever you've invested, you can move the money into a site like this called Crypto Pay. So you move the Bitcoins into this exchange. You then load up your debit card. And I've put this I put this card into uh, Halifax and Barclays and NatWest. I've pulled out so far possibly £2,000 of profits and I've gone and spent it or pulled the cash out and dropped it back into my bank account. They don't offer currently um, UK bank transfer. So I've currently now had to just pull the cash out of the machine, walk into the bank and deposit it in my bank account. I think they do offer Euro transactions. So I think you can move the money into your Euro account um, without having to pull the cash out, which is quite good. Um, risk management again. So keep your seven points in mind if you're getting in. Um, review this stuff. Um, make sure you're okay with the seven, six points. And just remember your first investment is going to be educational. Um, you might make money, you might lose money, but you'll learn a lot. Just remember this with it's very early stages for Bitcoin. This stuff will be around maybe the rest of your life, very early days. If the market cap is currently only 60 billion and we're looking to get to a trillion, there's a lot of money to be made. So get, get your education sorted out, get your risk management plans in place so you can actually make um, make some money from the gains that are going to be coming in the future. Just a reminder on the emotions, etc. For those who've traded before, you probably know what I mean. In terms of once your money's in the market, then your mind is I've made your mind is thinking have I made money? Am I gonna lose money? Should I take my money out? Is this a good investment? You may see better opportunities, which may make you think, should I get something else? It's most likely your after you invest the the value will go down a bit. You may be down 10%. You might think it's a bad trade. So again, emotions are going to play havoc. <clears throat> um, this is some of the things I've experienced. And once I've had my money invested, I've tended to check maybe other, every five minutes, every 10 minutes, how's my investment doing? Is it going up? Is it going down? Um, you may not sleep well. Um, I sleep for four hours, four to five hours a day anyway. But... 
because I'm a light sleeper, my, because my mind is on the money, I usually find myself waking myself up after two hours, just check the price and go back to bed. So these are sort of the emotional things that will play havoc with your mind. But you, after some time, or usually when you're in profit, um, the emotions calm down. But um, when you're starting out, it's going to just remember the emotions are going to play havoc with your mind. So um, it's good to have some solution to help with that. Um, for myself, because I found myself checking very frequently, um, I thought, okay, let me save myself 10 minutes each time I check. Usually I had to log on, get the computer, um, either switch it on or open the laptop, log in and check the price. So what I have now do nowadays is to actually check the... Uh, let me just check my battery. Okay, I'm cool. <clears throat> what I've now got is a portfolio application. These are not my investments, but these are examples from the website. But you can put in all your coin holdings and it sort of tells you how they're doing. So again, these are 24 hour price movements, 24 hour change here. So literally it takes me 10 seconds on my phone. I can just jump in quickly, just check Bitcoin's down 2.47, Dash is down 3.2, Ethereum's up 0 0.32, Litecoin's up one, down 1 1.4, Doge is down 1.2. Okay, that's all good. I'll close my phone and get on with life and stuff until the next time I check. So um, I found this pretty useful in, in terms of um, saving my time. Also calms the nerves. You can also set up here, you can see some alerts. So what I've now started to do is just to tell me if the coin drops below, for example, if it dropped below $350, it will ping me a message. If it goes above five, I can ping myself a message as well. So in case I want to sell at $5, I can get an alert. In case it goes down to 350, I want an alert so I can log in and check the news. So again, this will this sort of um, goes in in hand in hand with emotions. If you've got some application to tell you what's happening, you don't have to worry about your money. Um, that this one I think is only available on the iPhone. I think there's other ones, I guess, for Android, etc. For you guys on the Google devices. Um, so I'm going to look at sort of some of these are my historic trades. You can see twenty. 2013 these are so you can see how crazy all the movements you can see how frequently i was moving um buying selling coins so this is me with no strategy and no um no i say no hardly any experience in the bitcoin i've been doing trading before but the bitcoin stuff moves very fast i was sort of on the exchange sort of trading you can see the times on this uh, 26 27th of december so this is actually a this is like post bank holiday while i'm working from home so 4 p.m i'm there buying some stuff um hours later i'm selling some stuff why, why am i doing that i don't know but that that was my emotions back then um it's more and more trades so you can see this is on the right hand side 2014 we're now talking just new years so i'm still buying and selling stuff this all amounted to nothing really because the price you can see has just gone up. The buy and hold strategy would work pretty well here, to be honest. So $24 up to $25.95, up to $27, for example. So buying and selling, um, emotions, greed, whatever you want to call it, it's going to make you do this stuff until you understand what you're doing and step back and have a look and assess. Then you can sort of calm down on the trades. So you can see here now on the left is a uh, more recent ones april so here i'm just literally selling out my coins i've bought a few back in but mostly i'm selling my investment now it's it was i think sitting at four dollars for quite some time i decided if it got over ten dollars i'm gonna get all my investment out which was three thousand dollars so from a thousand coins i sold 300 to get a uh, three thousand so i sold 350 or so coins not a ten dollars, but slightly higher, eleven dollars, fourteen dollars, to get all my investment out. So now I'm sort of currently invested with none of my initial investment in the market. So now I'm at a stage where I'm investing profits to make more profits, etc. Which is uh, it's a good state of mind to be in. But obviously you're going to antagonize and play with your your emotions are going to get you until you get to that point. So um, this is currently what I have at the moment. So if it's of interest to you guys, I'll just show you it to let you know what I've got. 
So, uh, so the first one is uh, it's not ETC, it's actually LTC. So the first one is LTC earnings. That's a typo. Sorry about that. So my um, current ETC earnings are ten thousand dollars at the moment. So this is this formed part of my initial investment held over three years. So I initially had three thousand pound invested, which is let's call it four thousand dollars. So this one went up seven hundred percent, seven times. So this went from four thousand dollars to let's call it twenty eight thousand dollars in the space of uh, six weeks. So at the time, I had no knowledge, no plan, no exit plan, etc. So rather than take twenty thousand dollars and leave eight thousand in, I didn't take anything. I just left it all in. Um, I had no idea how to get my money out actually. Anyway, at this point, so before I had any um, chance to research all of that, the actual coin corrected back. So it went up. For, I think uh, Litecoin went from the average of maybe five dollars I had invested. It went from five dollars to forty-five dollars or so, forty-eight dollars, something like that. Um, all that money made, but then it came back down in a massive crash. Um, I was then back possibly at five thousand, six thousand dollars, which wasn't much profit. So I decided to leave it in. Um, three years just passed. I didn't do much with Bitcoin over the three years, apart from light reading and research. But just recently, this year. Bitcoin's been back in the news. Um, first time I got back into the Litecoin trading was when I heard that Litecoin had moved from $3 to $9. There's a lot of news coming back about Litecoin. So in the space of now, this year, from uh, yeah, this year, I guess Litecoin's moved from $5 to up as high as $36. So it's made a lot of gain back. <clears throat> um, Ripple Coin, that's another. It's been around for three years, but not much in the news. I've just recently put an investment in this one. Um, six weeks ago, I've profited 66%. So I've made $2,475 on that in six weeks. Um, Ethereum, I explained I bought um, to this. Yeah, I bought that one this morning, actually. So it's like 12 hours ago. Um, it's made a profit so far of 11%, which is 11, this is $170. Um, I can't remember how much I've put in there. Let me just check my uh, portfolio. I can tell you. So Ethereum, I've put in. Sorry, it's like I've put in one thousand five hundred dollars. Um, actual current profits is hundred hundred and forty dollars. So it's currently sitting at ten percent profit, nine percent profit at the moment. <clears throat> and the Digibyte one is quite interesting. <clears throat> Apparently, these the Digibyte coins are going to be mineable in Minecraft. So this is sort of a gaming coin. <clears throat> so this one caught my attention after it went up 200% in a space of a couple of hours. So I went to do some research. I actually bought into this one. So this one I bought on May the 17th. I put in $450. It's currently up at this point in time, 115%. So the profit on that one's $522 since uh, the 17th of May, which is like four days. Okay, so that sort of brings me to the end of the uh, presentation. So it's uh, half nine. So are you guys interested in getting in? I'm gonna sort of have been offering to help people get in. Obviously this stuff is uh, either new, um, you may be wondering how can I invest, how can I get in, etc. You may wanna sort of get a ramp up or get some help. So what I'm going to offer for anyone who wants to get in for the next three months, I'm going to offer my time. I'm going to offer you free calls, 20, minute e 20 minutes each per month. So you can choose when you want the calls. We'll take a 20 minute call, Skype on webinar like this. I can share my screen. We can log into the exchanges and discuss what you like for 20 minutes. Um, I'll help you understand the markets, decide what coin to get into. Um, I'll offer unlimited mail, um, WhatsApp support for that month. And also I can notify you of my trades. So if you want to follow what I'm doing on the smaller coins, for example, for example, I moved into Digibyte four days ago, that's 115% profit. I moved into Ethereum this morning, that's 11% profit. So if you want to follow some of my trades, um, I'm going to offer to notify you via WhatsApp group um, what I'm moving into, what I'm moving out into. 
Um, obviously, I can't offer my time totally for free. Um, I, I feel that if you're going to pay for the month of support, you're going to actually take some action. So for anyone investing less than £1,500 as a beginner investor, or anyone who's totally new to Bitcoin, for I'm going to offer for £50 a month um, the services above. And for anyone intermediate investor offering sort of um, investing over $1,500 for £100 a month, I'll offer the same services. But obviously, you've got more money at stake. So um, I'll sort of maybe have to show you a, a bit more in detail about where you're going to put your money, um, how not to allocate it to just one coin, you to maybe spread it around, etc. Sort of, we're going to sort of look at more of the risk. I think the calls will be more about risk management, etc., and maybe setting up your environment. For example, the block folio. Um, I can show you how to set that up so you can get alerts and notifications. Um, how to make put in orders on the exchanges so you can actually sell your money or buy money without actually being online, the computer will do it for you, etc. Okay, so that comes, that is the end of the presentation. Is there any um, questions I can take for the next 10 to 20 minutes, if you want to type them in the chat window, or if you want, I can maybe open up the mics and we can have a discussion. I think that might be better, actually, there's not a lot of people on. I guess I've, unmute, I've unmuted everyone, so if you want to have a discussion, questions, go over anything on the slides, um, let me know. Hey, Andrew, great work, man. Um, yeah, no obviously, you put a lot of thought into this. Really appreciate it. I think it was really, very, very, very good and informative. Question on the call. I was just thinking, with so many coins, is this just for speculation? Obviously, you have Bitcoin, which seems to be the more mature coin of the currencies. If you want to start out, would you start out with Bitcoin over the other ones as they are volatile? Or would you say just do the research on each of them? Or would you say as a beginner, there is more value found in other currencies than Bitcoin? I guess so. Um, in this case, I think all the coins are going to move up. Um, some will move down, but majority will move, move up. Um, Bitcoin, if you look at the percentage of returns, it's going to depend on what you want. If you're trying to make some money, um, we're, we're talking speculation, you, you will need some volatility for it to move 100% in one day. Um, it's all about the risk management. You can buy some Bitcoin if you want to buy and hold that. Um, but I found myself moving away from the major coins to the smaller ones to make some better returns yep. so if you're going to put some money in bitcoin's good to hold um any coin can correct that includes bitcoin as well um i won't say any coin any other coins better than any other one um anything i'll say bitcoin is like the uh reserve currency people have to use it to transact so there's always going to be liquidity there um, it's always going to be easy to sell and buy. It's going to be. It's been around for quite a long time. Um, as I explained, the Litecoin when I initially invested that went up seven hundred percent. It's come down five hundred percent. Bitcoin is actually the same when it started as well. Um, two hundred two hundred dollars back down to thirty dollars. From thirty dollars up to a thousand dollars and back down to seven hundred and back down to three hundred. So it's very volatile. Um, do your research. I think when you get into this stuff, two hundred pound educational money. Learn, learn how the markets work. But you can see these percentages here. Um, Bitcoin's not here. If you look for Bitcoin, I'm believing it. It's like I think I showed you a while back. It's, uh, okay, it's literally flat for, for the last 24 hours. The next coins have made you 12, 10, 9%, etc. Some have lost more money. So again, um, with investing, it's about the coin itself, the volume, um, the story behind the coin, etc. Look at the charts and stuff. Cool, man. But uh, yeah, I'll say the short, the smaller coins you can make money. Um, it's about getting your two hundred dollars to a thousand dollars, getting your thousand dollars to two thousand dollars, getting the two thousand to five thousand. So you have to look at it in that terms. Don't try and get two hundred dollars to five thousand dollars in a month. Let's take it um, $100 at a time or $200 at a time. 
let's try and double our initial hundred dollars first. There might it might be a slow process, but you're going to learn. You'll lose some. You might go negative for a bit. You'll go positive, but try and make the most of that first hundred. That's your educational money. Um, some friends just put twenty dollars into the market every month. For example, dollar cost average in, which is quite good while you're learning. Um, I've never done that myself because I, I, well, from looking at the charts, by the time next month comes round, you're paying double already, sort of thing. So I've, from my, for my own strategy and my approach to investing, I've tended to put lump sums in, like a thousand dollars, five hundred, five, a thousand dollars, five hundred dollars, two thousand dollars, and I'll split that across some coins, but I wouldn't put it all into one coin. The initial um, investment is going to be the hardest investment because that's when you don't have any profits to play with. Um, as I trade today, I don't have any of my initial investment invested in the market, but I'm up sort of 400, 500% at the moment with none of my money invested. So um, <clears throat> looking at my six points in the strategy thing, you want to put your educational money in, learn about it, invest more, um, risk manage your money, Look at slowly growing the money and then get your money out of the investment so you're trading with profits only. Then you can try and take slightly higher risks on newer, smaller coins that are a bit more volatile that are moving up. And you're going to try and move, sort of make the gains on, on just using your the profits, for example. Um, I showed you, I think, Mike, I showed you the Digibyte investment this morning. So that was a brand new coin. Um, very low in price, um, high in volatility. I only put in four hundred and fifty dollars of my existing profit into that coin, but that's sort of doubled in price already in four days. So you don't need to put much in. It's about just growing your account to a point where you can pull out your initial investment and still be in the game. Well, thanks for that. Um, any other questions? Is anyone looking to get in? Um, did anyone know about this stuff before they saw the post? Cool. Um, if you wish to, if you want the slides, um, please uh, ping me in the chat. Let me put up my uh, email address, etc. Okay. So um, if you want to take down my details, so I think most of you have me on Facebook or LinkedIn, or that's my email address. Um, I will give out a copy of the slides. Um, I'm possibly going to do some more training on this stuff. If you want to also contact me, let me know what uh, information you may require. Um, I'm going to have to charge for the sort of um, hand-holding sessions just because it's my time. But for that, I can give you personal one-to-one -one guidance, um, answer any personal questions you have. I can also understand what money you're investing and advise on how to invest that the best way. Um, I mean, with a presentation, I have to keep it sort of generic for people on the call. But um, there is money to be made here. It's very, very early stages. Um, you can use this information for the rest of your lifetime. If you can get in now, this is sort of money before it was money. If you can get in now, you should be able to make some good profits. I myself, I'm trying to target. I think my current investment account is around $20,000. I'm currently trying to grow this to a quarter of a million in four to five years time if i can so i'm going to be taking doing a lot of trades etc doing a lot of still doing research every day you can never know enough the market's changing every day um new coins are coming out um different things and features are happening so if you guys want to follow and jump on board um, i may even make a chat group where for those invested um, I'll, we can maybe just exchange our trades and et cetera, et cetera. Just have a group where we all provide knowledge, like, like a mastermind. Um, then everyone will sort of um, gain from everyone else's uh, knowledge and research. Okay, um, question on the chat board. What are the fundamental price drivers? Okay, fundamental price drivers, um, mainly I've found this, this is software, for example. So price drivers, for example, are new features being added to the software, um, improvements to the existing software in terms of processing speed. Um, for Litecoin, for example, it was at $9. Um, they added some uh, 
new features that allowed each um, transaction block by a block of transactions. So for example, um, I think the Visa system can handle 47,000 transactions per second. Bitcoin can possibly only do 30. So there's going to be a lot of technology improvements. To, when I say Bitcoin, I mean Bitcoin, the currency itself, but also some other coins like Litecoin. Litecoin can handle slightly more, but not enough to meet Visa standards at the moment. This is what the consumers are spending. So there's going to be a lot of improvements to these coins. So which coin is going to be able to match Visa in terms of capacity to perform transactions on a per second basis? Bitcoin, $2,000 can only do 30 transactions per second. Visa used across the globe, 47,000. What's going to happen to Bitcoin when Bitcoin can transact 100,000, sorry, 100 transactions a second, 1,000 transactions, 10,000, 20, 30, 40,000. At the point it surpasses Visa, um, what is the market cap going to be? So that's one, price, one of the price drivers. Another one's sort of related is news around the coins. Um, what are the developers doing to the coin to increase its value? For example, um, I showed you the crypto pay that enables you to draw the Bitcoin money out of the cash machine. So this wasn't available three years ago. And with this ability, this means people can now hold their Bitcoin and leave it in invested and go to cash point and get fiat money out, etc. Are we going to come to a point where you can use a card and pay for any of your services um, with Bitcoin rather than fiat money? At the moment, we're having to convert from Bitcoin to fiat, i.e. Bitcoin to sterling or Bitcoin to dollar, Bitcoin to euro, and then pay the cashier with fiat money. What's going to happen when we can pay the cashier with Bitcoin money? This is going to increase the liquidity. So someone out there on the market looking at a solution to do this. We've got um, online payment systems already. A lot of transactions are online already. It just takes a bit of software and integration to enable Amazon to take Bitcoin, um, any of these large um, consumer brands to accept the Bitcoin, whether it be Bitcoin, Litecoin, any of the other coins. And that will then sort of drive up the price because you've got more usage, more volume, um, more liquidity in the market. So again, the price drivers are similar to stocks and shares in terms of when people go in, when people buy, it drives the price up. But with Bitcoin, it's, it's a exchange of value. So money's being moved around. But uh, I feel that we're going to get to a point where more fiat money goes into the Bitcoin market. We're sitting currently at 60 billion pound market cap. Um, if we get to a trillion, we're times in the market cap by 20 now. So imagine times in Bitcoin value 2,000 by 20. We're now at 40,000. So that's the price drivers. There's a lot of, uh, it's literally software driven, feature driven, service driven. Um, check the news, see what's happening. If someone announces a major news item, the price is going to spike. Um, for the Digibyte coin I invested in, apparently you're going to be able to mine these coins in Minecraft. So anyone knows about the gaming industry, it's a massive industry. So people are going to be exchanging goods or buying goods with this Digibyte currency, apparently. So again, that's a news item. So I think Minecraft is coming on board in 20 days. So this Digibyte coin is going to see a 200% move up just because you can now use it in Minecraft. I don't know what Minecraft is all about. Someone said you can mine the coins. So I understand that to be good. Um, I think there's a gaming website just using Digicoin as well. So you can mine coins in Minecraft to go and buy, um, use Digicoin to go and buy goods and services in World of Warcraft, for example. So again, exchange of currency, buying and selling. Um, I hope that answers the question for the uh, fundamental price drivers. <clears throat> okay, cool. Um, I have, uh, I have hey. one more question. Yep. If you don't mind. Yep, go. Question on the call. Ethereum or Digibyte? Which one would you say you are more confident in? I'm invested in both. Um, Digibyte, pretty new. I think the space for Digibyte is because it's gaming. <clears throat> um, young people 
I think they understand the digital world better than those who are going to be using Ethereum. Um, but although, on the other hand, there's a lot of money in Ethereum. So um, I think both are going to rise. I think Digibyte is going to rise more because, one, it's, it's fairly cheap. Um, once it's cheap, more people can get in and transact. And if you look at the, the volume charts, etc., the price spikes, you can look at the, uh, the gains on these coins. The small ones need to move a very small amount to get you a big return. Um, the bigger the coin, the bigger it has to move to make you a good return. If you're 100% on Bitcoin, Bitcoin used to be $4,000. Um, it's not going to get there in an, in an hour's time. But I've seen this done on the smaller coins where it goes from one tenth, one hundredth of a cent to two hundredth of a cent, for example. That's a very, very little move to make your money back. So um, I'm invested in both at the moment, but I've got less invested in Digibyte because I know it's going to move faster. So I don't need a lot invested to make more money. <clears throat> um, price of Ethereum is 140 48 dollars or so at the moment you need some money to go in it's a more stable it's going to rise but it needs a good amount of momentum for it to move say from 150 dollars to 200 dollars is a 25 percent gain actually that's made 12.5 percent gain it's not it's a lot of money for the little return that it gives but again it's uh it's not going to be as volatile as uh the digibyte so there's a lot of elements to consider um even myself, I can't decide on which individual one to go for. That's why I've got money in both um, allocated in terms of I don't need a lot in Digibyte because it's going to grow 200, 300%, maybe 500%. I can possibly see a 1,000% by the end of May, for example. But then you don't need a lot of money in to make a lot of money if you're going to get a 1,000%. So I don't have a actual answer, but that's my approach to... Uh, and not knowing the answer, invest in both, allocate, allocate accordingly. Cool, okay. Um, if you guys have found this useful, I'm gonna end the call in a second. If you found it useful, um, got my details there, ping me if you wanna get any more information, I can go through more specifics, maybe how to do a trade, etc., etc. et, cetera, et cetera, on, a, on another webinar at some point in the future and stuff, okay. Okay, I'm going to call it a night then. It's uh, nearly 10 o'clock. Thanks for joining, everyone. I am hope it's been useful. Um, if you do decide to get in, just uh, remember I've got the... Uh, can get to the end. I've got the offer to uh, sort of aid you, invest if you want to pay for one month just to get started, etc. Um, put your money in the market, understand what's actually happening. Um, I can help you get your money in put your trades on and we can sort of maybe monitor it and see what's happening. Okay. Um, thanks for joining everyone. Have a good night, evening, etc. in the week. Cheers. Okay. So I'm back. Uh, let me know what you thought of the video in the comments below. So if you did manage to watch the whole video, I'll just give a little summary. So in the end, I've been holding Ethereum for quite some time. So that's been a very profitable investment. I didn't do much of Bitcoin, as I explained in the video. I am actually looking at the rate of return and not the coin itself. I think the problem with a lot of investors, they, they see the price of Bitcoin and think it's too much to invest in. But if you actually look at the rate of return, if you can make 10%, 20%, 30% return on your money in a week, this is where the benefit of crypto investing is, and this is why I promote, promoted it to my friends. It was never about the price of the coin, it was that you could make 100%, 200% return on your money in one week, uh, sometimes more. You'll see another post on my YouTube account, there was one coin that made 5,000%. That's documented on the website, you can go and watch that video if you've not already. That was Phantom, an investment that was made in 2021 in January. Held it for one year, so a five hundred pound investment turned so five hundred dollar investment turned into thirty thousand dollars of profit. I believe there's still opportunities in crypto. You won't be making the same gains, 
But as I say to many people, the rate of return is much faster. If you look at the stock market, you may make 10 or 20% in one year. With crypto, this is still possible today to make the same returns in one day, uh, definitely in a week. I might add as well, the crypto bull market has just started. So we're about to see an influx of money and there'll be another bull market to run for the next seven months. So if you're not in and you want to get in, you literally need to do so next week or before the year's out. Um, if you wait any longer, price is going to be too high. You may not want to jump in at that point. And as explained in the webinar, if you want to put in small amounts of money to test the market, it's also good to do so. If you're under the age of 30, this is probably the best investment you're going to have access to that can be done quickly and easily and allow, allow you to make some profits or some money from investing. Okay, so that's me for the video. Thanks for watching and hopefully, hopefully see some comments down below regarding the investments and let me know if you would have invested had you have watched this webinar back in June of 2017.